If you've ever wondered the best way to apply large vinyl decals to a wood or painted surface, and also pour some tabletop epoxy on there for a glass smooth finish, stick around because we're getting ready to do one today. Hey guys and gals, welcome back. I'm Derek, this is Square Splinter, and today we're gonna to be applying a large vinyl decal to the top of this wooden box that's been painted, and then we're gonna put some tabletop epoxy on top of it to make a glass finish. So, I'm gonna bring you in a little closer. We're gonna go over the tips and tricks on applying this vinyl decal, some do's and don'ts, and then we're gonna pour this epoxy on there and see how it comes out. All right, so first things first, we wanna gather some of the supplies that we're gonna need. Of course, one, you need your vinyl decal. You're gonna need some sort of tape. Painter's tape usually works best. A heat gun isn't, ne isn't really necessary, but it does help on some thicker vinyl graphics to make sure that they're adhered the way that they should be. And then of course we need our tabletop epoxy, which mine happens to come from Total Boat. And yes, there will be a link in the description if you need to get some epoxy. First off, you wanna make sure your surface of course is clean, free of dust. We're gonna go ahead and take the entire decal and you wanna just place it on there in the exact position that you want it to be, the whole decal. And when you get it in that position, we are going to take a piece of tape to stick it right in the middle of this graphic. We're gonna apply this graphic with what's known as the hinge method. So, we're gonna take our tape, stick it to our tabletop, go across the graphic, and again, it's still in the, the place that we want it to be when we're finished. If it's not exactly in the middle, not a big deal. Once you have your graphic in place where you need it to be, the next thing you're gonna need is some sort of squeegee. You can use a credit card, or this is an actual vinyl squeegee with the protective wrap on it, but you can simply use even a, a Bondo spreader, take a soft cloth or something and, and kind of wrap around it so it doesn't scratch your graphic. You can use just about anything that allows you to flatten it out. We're gonna peel back the graphic all the way to the tape. I'm gonna take some scissors. We're gonna cut the backing. It doesn't really matter where you cut the backing. You wanna get it as close as you can to the, the vinyl, but it's not critical that it's right on the vinyl. Make sure your tape stays stuck so it doesn't move. Check the alignment one more time just to make sure it stays in place. And they're gonna take, I'm right-handed, but I'm gonna take the, the graphic in my right hand very lightly, squeegee in my left hand, and we're gonna start just pushing a little bit at a time, going across, back and forth, a little bit at a time. So we get it all smoothed out. Make sure you squeegee it in different directions. Put pretty firm pressure. You don't have to push real hard, but firm pressure. Once you have this stuck down, this side is going to stay straight no matter what. So we can take this tape up. Going to pull back the other side where we cut. And this time it's just the opposite. I take the vinyl, my left hand, a little bit of time. You do want to put a little extra concentration right where the graphic was hinged because sometimes a little bit of air or wrinkle can go right in there. So just a little bit more attention right there and it'll be perfectly fine. Push this all the way out like that. Again, make sure you get all the edges. Make sure you squeegee it different ways. Check for any bubbles. And that's it. Our graphic is applied, perfectly flat. We are ready for the next step, which is mixing some epoxy. So after we got our graphic applied, I double checked it to make sure everything is laid down the way that it should be. I don't need to heat it or anything. It's laid down good. The next step is preparing our work surface for pouring the epoxy, which is very important. We're gonna have this protective paper down. We're gonna have our lid in the middle, but it does need to be elevated just a little bit so that the epoxy is able to run over the edge. 
To elevate our lid just a little bit, I'm using these cheap painter's pyramids. Just so that it's up off the work surface so that it's able to run over the side. Because we don't want any dirt in our pour, we're gonna take a damp cloth, clean this off one more time just to make double sure that nothing is on it. And then we need to mix the epoxy. This total boat epoxy couldn't be easier to use. There's part A, which is the resin, part B is the hardener. The containers are the same size, so it's mixed one to one. We pour equal amounts of each into here and mix them up really good. Do be aware, if you want to know a more accurate measurement of how much epoxy you will need, Total Boat on their website has a calculator uh, that you can go in there and you put in your dimensions and how thick of a pour that you want to make and it'll tell you exactly how much epoxy that you need. Very handy. I'm not too worried about it. I've done this a few times so I know about how much I'm going to need. I always make a little extra because you want to be able to run this over the edge. When you put this epoxy on here, you do not spread it on with a brush and make, try to make it real thin. It is self-leveling, but it needs to flow itself to get the best results, and I'll show you that. I'm not a big fan of having sticky stuff on my hands, so I wear gloves doing, doing this. Even though it's a pretty clean process because we're just pouring it on there, I'm using gloves. So you can use the side of this container right here, one to one. We just fill to each number how much we're going to need. Cap those off so I don't spill them. And of course, it's very important this has to be mixed very thoroughly. You do want to try to stir without putting in as many air bubbles as you can, but with this type of epoxy, with the tabletop epoxy, and because we're doing such a thin pour, it's not, I found it's not as important if there's a few bubbles worked into it when you're stirring it, because having such a thin surface, the bubbles are, it's an easy, the bubbles have an easy time of working their way out, I guess what I'm trying to say. Okay, now that we got this mixed up good, one thing that I also did want to mention, your enemy in pouring this is dust. It's dust, bugs, everything else like that. So right before we pour, you want to be sure that you have some sort of container or box, a cardboard box would work good, just to be able to cover the entire project up when you're done pouring. It helps so much with preventing little dust nibs and bugs and in getting into your pour. Because we want this glass smooth right off the get-go. Because that was the name of this video and that's what it needs to look like or I'm gonna have to do it over again. And that would be a bad how-to video. All right, we have our spreader. We have our mixed epoxy. And I'm gonna pour this just a little bit at a time. Come in a little zigzag here so that I can kind of spread it out to where I don't have to really pour any more than I need to. And after I get that on there a little bit, I'm gonna take my spreader, just lightly make sure everything's covered, and I'm gonna push it towards the edges. Another thing I did not mention that is also really important, you, you need this to be as level as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is gonna be, you know, like probably almost an eighth of an inch thick on here. So if you're level out an eighth of an inch or so, it's gonna be okay because the thickness of the pour will take care of that. But you want to, you don't want to scrape this, like you don't want to dig down in there and scrape this to the edge. You wanna just drape it over the top and pull it towards the edges. You want this as thick as possible and you want it to run off the edges itself. Because if it's running off the edges, that means it's thick enough on top that it's gonna have a glass finish. You do not want to, to brush it and try to make it smooth yourself like paint. This is not paint. We wanna go along here and make sure every edge on this top has epoxy poured over it. So I'm just lightly dragging this spreader across this whole thing. So you can see how it's 
it's running over the edge, but I'm not concerned too much about how it's running over the edge. I'm only concerned about the top. So what I like to do, and again, everybody does things a little differently. Now that I have this pulled all the way to the edges, I wanna be sure that this stays perfectly level. And so that I can make sure that it stays perfectly level, we have to make sure that there's enough epoxy on the pour that it can level itself. So now that I've completely covered the entire top so that no surface is showing without epoxy, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little more on top around the entire surface. And again, this is not completely necessary. This is just what I like to do because I have better success with my pours when I do this. We're going to pour more all over and we're not gonna to touch it. We've already smoothed it out to go all the way to the edges. We've poured enough to where that we know that it can glass smooth itself. And now we need to get rid of the little bubbles. And how do we get rid of the little bubbles? Heat gun or a torch, either one. I have the heat gun, that's what I'm gonna use. It's gotta be hot. We just slowly bring it across there. And you can watch those bubbles disappear. The heat also acts to kind of make the epoxy a little thinner, so it allows it to run where it needs to go. Run this along the entire thing. Be careful, you don't want to burn it. Keep moving it. Along all the edges, make sure the epoxy flows where it wants to go. I'm using this Tupperware, not Tupperware, whatever these things are called, but you could easily use a box to cover this up. Get our spreader out of the way. Now, we're gonna leave that overnight, come back, and it better be smooth. So congrats, you stuck with me all night in the shop. It's time to reveal this, hopefully, glass-like surface on top of this box lid. So let's take it off and to have a look. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm gonna bring you guys in closer to take a look. Turned out great. So as you guys could hopefully see, we got great results. One thing I also wanted to mention real quick was I didn't actually talk about why I left a border around the top here with my decal. I don't know that that's always necessary, but I've always done it just for protection. I leave a little border around the outside. That way the decal is not the only thing that is adhesive to the top. Um, I usually do the border either a black or a dark color just to kind of frame my image. But that gives an eighth quarter of an inch the epoxy to actually seal and adhere the rim of your vinyl so it can never get any moisture or dirt or anything under there. And I just, it just makes me feel better that this is going to stay laid down, not crack or move or get messed up anytime in the future. Of course, there's just a little bit of cleanup. I'll have to clean up these nubs on the bottom of here, which is just easily be able to sand those off. The sides, I'll be able to either sand these down and smooth them out to uh, bring it back down to the paint, or honestly, it's such a, it's a pretty smooth finish. I ought to be able to just wet sand that maybe and just use the finish of the epoxy on the side. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but Quick re recap, I really think the most important thing as far as getting a good finish, not only for laying down big vinyl graphics on wood or painted surfaces or whatever it might be, but getting a good finish for tabletop epoxy is your preparation. Make sure you have all the materials ready to go when you're ready to do the pour. Follow just simple steps. As far as the vinyl, just take your time. Make sure you have the graphic taped down. And it, remember, it's the hinge method. You bring one side over, smooth it out, bring the second side over, it's gonna be perfectly lined up every time. And if you go slow, take your time, it's gonna be great every time. The epoxy, don't try to brush it on. Don't try to thin it way out. You might use a little extra than you were hoping to. Your results are gonna be really smooth and it's gonna pay off in the end of all your hard work. So thanks for hanging out guys and gals. We will catch you in the next video. And everyone, please be sure if you have any questions at all in this process, feel free to leave a comment below. And if I can't answer it, I sure know someone that can't answer it, but please leave your questions in the comments below. And also leave your comments below of how many things I did wrong, because I love to always hear those comments as well. So thank you guys.